This is the Military and Aerospace Electronics Report. I'm John Keller. You know, as a kid back in the 60s, I was always fascinated with ray guns. Most guys my age were back then. It came, I think, from a potent mix of those 1950s science fiction movies and America's Race to the Moon, which was in a frenzied pace at the time. I grew up on Captain Kirk's phasers, the laser rifles from Lost in Space, and especially the Space Ghost Stun Ray. Everybody knew of the close encounters of Martin the Martian and Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. But I digress. Ray guns were so much fun back then because they were just fantasy. We all knew that, but this might not be true for much longer. The folks at the Army's Tank and Automotive Command outside of Detroit are working quietly on some projects that, who knows, might lead to future generations of tanks and other armored combat vehicles with ray guns. We call them directed energy weapons now, as their main or at least ancillary armament. Now recently, as I wandered through the government solicitations, I've stun stumbled on some interesting things. Just this morning, in fact, I read that Army TACOM is in talks with the U.S. Combat Systems Operation of BAE Systems in Minneapolis to integrate four Puma 11s, Puma spelled with two Ps, into a pulse power system. Now, normally TACOM's job is to procure and develop technology for U.S. combat vehicles. And not long ago, I saw a sources sought notice from the Tank Automotive Research Development and Engineering Center asking which companies out there might be able to build special military batteries for high pulse power applications in current and future military vehicles. Hmm. So let's see. Combat vehicles, pulse power systems, and this Puma thing, whatever that might be. Well, as it turns out, Puma, with two Ps, is a name trademarked by BAE Systems in Minneapolis, and it stands for Pulsed Power Unit for Military Applications. So what's all this pulse power business anyway? Well, it usually refers to things like high power microwave and electromagnetic pulse weapons. Now these would aim tightly focused high power bursts of RF energy at people and machines, acting kind of like a handheld aimable microwave oven. Now if you aim this type of thing at people, it can heat up moisture and oils on the skin and is intended to cause discomfort and compel groups of people to disperse or just run away. I understand it actually hurts like hell. But designed right, it shouldn't kill, cripple, or cause any permanent damage. In other uses, this directed energy technology could help with nuclear survivability and hardness testing, materials processing, waste and product sterilization, food purification, and electromagnetically powered transportation. But I don't think this is what the folks at Army take on have in mind. Some of these pulse power weapons could generate a very short, intense energy pulse to cause a transient electrical surge of thousands of volts, way more than enough to fry semiconductor devices and bring down any modern electronic system within the effective range of the weapon. Makes you think, huh? A weapon mounted to a combat vehicle that can kill electronics. That means lights out for navigation systems, weapons control, sensors, even the electronic control of engines. So without the proper shielding, communication systems would stop, radar systems would go dark, aircraft and helicopters would have to land awfully quick when their engines stopped, and vehicles of all kinds would come to a screeching halt. Sounds interesting to me. Maybe ray guns aren't just for fun anymore. For the Military and Aerospace Electronics Report, I'm John Keller.